Well, I've convinced myself to start uh, trying to mine some fake internet money. So we're gonna get a rig together with GPUs. I got some aluminum angle at the store for more than I should have paid for it. Uh, we're just gonna screw it together because the last time I tried welding aluminum with my MIG, it worked, but it took a lot of grinding to make it not look awful. And to see, uh, it, it was bad. So we're just gonna screw it together. We don't need it to hold up a, a house or anything crazy. So I got an 80 tooth. I think it's, no, it's more than that. It's a lot of teeth, but anyway, this blade's for cutting metal. I got it for doing the renovation in the bathroom. And then I'm gonna use parts out of this. Well, I want the case, like I want the standoff, so I don't wanna have to try to make my own garbage. I got plexiglass for that, which I don't think I'll actually end up needing uh, at all. So maybe, but it wasn't expensive, so we'll keep it around the house. Either way, I need to get something together and I'd rather take this back plate, all the metal, and just screw that down on the aluminum rails and be done with it. And we'll put the new board on here if it, well, if it actually fits. So we'll get this apart, take a look, compare it to the new board. You can see how this thing's had some issues over the years, right? Here's the, here's the Wi-Fi card hanging out. You know, works great. Put tape over it so it doesn't short. And then the hard drive, uh, because this didn't have SATA port, well, it didn't, it didn't have shits, and it didn't have cables, so I used one of these USB dongles, and then just routed it around, with, like, it's had its own issues. The whole point of this thing was to be able to use the camera uh, to watch the boy when he's in his crib, taking naps when he was younger during the day. I could come out in the garage, I could have him up on the monitor, and it was easy to get some work done. If he started flailing around, I could go, go up there and, and spend more time with him when he was awake. Um, while still being somewhat productive. Now that's not a thing anymore. He naps maybe once a day, it's nonstop. So by the time he's asleep, I don't need to be checking on that because he's just asleep and the wife can watch him. So yeah, let me tear this down. Ew. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so far so good. Uh, decided that it was easier because I realized that the, loom, the rivets are aluminum so it's not too bad to drill them. They drill really fast. So I got the outer shell off. I'll give me some interesting sheet metal to mess around with later. And then uh, I think we can pop both these sides off. This might be a little bit of a butt, but because um, our board comes up and it, it'll interfere with that and it'll hang off here. So I think what we'll do is when this mounts, we'll have the back rail come across. So we have something to, to support it there somehow. We just need to make sure we don't have an interface on directly on the metal which we can use our plexiglass for so things are things are moving along let me see how much further this comes apart right, there we go so there's a panel with uh, some pretty threaded standoffs that these screws will work with i like this a lot better than like screwing it into wood or something like that so all we do is go Go upstairs and check real quick because i try not to bring components down here into the garage because i make messes uh <laughs> and see if it only uses these two or if it does there wasn't a hole for this i think the car the board only comes like here so i'll double check that see how it really lines up with these and anything that's not going to get used you know we'll lop off some of the side and just uh screw that to the rails but i want to make sure that like if this standoff doesn't have a spot i don't want it sticking up and pushing on the board uh, where it might interfere with the tracing so okay so this is where the edge of the board comes to it only uses these four uh at the time you know, we're gonna shave these down so they're not touching it and i think i'm gonna cut uh somewhere right around there so we keep this crease yeah kind of lop it off and then i'm gonna keep these and see if I can't use them. Like if I have one big panel, right, I might be able to uh, mount this to the piece going across. Well, no, because these aren't the same distance. Either way, I'm gonna see if I can repurpose these um, instead of trying to make something myself. Yep, here's, this will be the front part of the frame, right? So the board, this guy, will sit here so we'll screw him on probably in the center uh, somewhere and on this mark where I use my superior sheet metal working skills to make a cutout will be for one of these C channels uh, to go across and that'll support this part of it 
as well as any power supplies I need to stack next to them. Because um, that's a power supply came to about there. So if it oops, sits down. Okay, brought one downstairs. Keep it here where uh, things are a little cleaner. So we only need it for the measurements. So I've got a riser board already attached to this. Um, and all, all the video cards ever are going to have mounts up top. Uh, and then the PCI will be in the same spot because everything has to be consistent with the, with the board and whatnot. So I think what we want is our rail right about in the center of that. So yeah, it's going to be pretty skinny to the front there. Um, and then we need to measure this distance down so that it's correct and it's not flopping around or anything. So this sits as flat as possible. Here it is. Um, remembered at the end that triangles are strong. So I went ahead and just triangulated the end instead of trying to box anything. Um, it's pretty stout. Like it's going to hold up everything we need to. This is a little jank, but whatever. One thing, I do have an irrational fear of metal stuff touching. So like these screw heads that stick up. I'm like, oh, like, what if they, you know, the back of this board, just a whole bunch of stuff back there. I don't want to, so I think we're going to space it up with this plexiglass. We'll cut uh, holes for the standoffs through the plexi so that it sandwiches this against the metal instead of metal against metal. Now, yeah, that's how we'll do it. Here's that plexiglass piece. I got a little crack when I was drilling it, but I made these big enough. They kind of sit on top of these screw heads and go over the, the standoffs. So I think we're done with garage stuff except for a hole to hold the card. Mm. And I think I should drill those now. Yeah. I have to drill those now. Otherwise, I'll have aluminum everywhere. And then I'll take everything inside, put it together, not in the garage. Here's the board in place, that plexiglass in between. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It feels good. Nothing's weird going on, and I know that none of the backside of the board is going to be touching metal. So, best chip in the universe. Mmm, Celeron. Awesome. This was only like 80 bucks. So I'll have everything priced and get a spreadsheet going for ROI, that kind of thing. We'll see uh, real world results in my basement compared to um, what people are advertising. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen, but we're plugged in. Power supplies. I need to figure out a good way to mount that. Mm, board's lit up. That's good. Power switch. CPU fan came on and went right back off. Okay, so here's allegedly the problem. This was a 7th gen. Boards for 8th gen. This is a 9th gen, which should be compatible. <laughs> we'll find out uh, if it'll post once it gets us all together. Derp. Okay, round two. See if we can't uh, confirm my stupidity. This fires right up. Now it should go in, I mean, there's some BIOS changes I'll need to make, small details like that, but really we just want to see if it starts running. You got a little load meter up there, so let's look at our actual draw. It's not drawing anything. Board's on, drawing two, 1.72 watts with nothing on. <laughs> Nervous. Oh, let's make sure this is looking for a signal. How do you buttons? There we go. Some blue. Please. Look at that. Fan's still spinning. It's doing little flashy things. Cool. Posted. Okay. Oh, I'm unsure where I left off. Last time I had the camera out during this ordeal, uh, battery died while I was filming. But there was, with the nice hash OS, I kept getting a little, the connection would say disconnected. Then it would go back to connected. Then it would say disconnected. And the uptime on their rig manager online said that it was connected for, you know, 1300 minutes or whatever it was for uh, overnight. So I'm not sure it really was disconnecting, but the card wasn't performing anywhere near as well as the 3060 that's upstairs. I mean, they're different brands, but I gave them the same exact overclock settings. 
So we're gonna go ahead and throw Windows 10 in this thing just for funsies, use Afterburner, and see if I can get it to match the performance from upstairs. If it seems to be doing that, I'll do a little card shuffle, take the 1060 out of the wife's computer, put it back into mine, take that 1030 that's in mine and bring it down here and have them both on the same rig. But you know, this is how my brain feels trying to get all this stuff lined up. So uh, I'll figure something out. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to use Afterburner for that I didn't see any options for in, in NiceHash's setup is that I'll be able to give it a minimum fan speed. There's a lot of talk that, uh, from the research I've been trying to do to catch up with everyone that's been at it for a decade that the fans only come on based on the the CPUs the GPU's computer chip guy, right, it looks at that temperature and runs the fans while we're declocking it and not using much. It's our RAM that's getting hot. So we, we don't want it to be spinning low. I always kind of wondered in videos why guys had them spin up so fast and the temp was low, and it's because they're not really looking at the the, the chip temperature. They're looking at the, the RAM temperature in the card. So, yeah, we'll, we'll bring those up to a a little bit quicker, you know, or I'm going too fast because the bearings will fail eventually, but I'll figure out what's normal. Okay, so the monitor is not plugged into the power meter. That's okay because I, I'm not going to have the monitor running all the time. I'm just going to check, use it to check on stuff. Or am I in a way, this particular one shows accepted and rejected shares. So in the morning we can check on that, try to make sure it's below 2%. Um, I'm a little more aggressive with the overclocking because it's running really cool. The basement's nice and cold, so we're 55% uh, on the power limit, minus 500 on the core, and 1300 up on the memory. So if we see a bunch of rejected shares eventually, we'll, we'll want to change that a little bit. But check it out, 138 watts. That's the entire power draw for the whole system. So. Uh, that card's drawing, not drawing a whole lot of power. So super happy with the board. I was a little scared during the Windows install because it was like 700 watts <laughs> in their initial setup. But now that things are stable, it's looking good. Um, you know, we'll let it run overnight and then tomorrow I'll probably combine things. All right, I've got both cards running now. It's interesting, it'll run two separate uh, pools, algorithms, whatever. I'm not even sure what to call them, but it'll run two different plugins to do mining depending on which card does better with which one. So that's kind of cool. And I've got it uh, right around 440 watts because I haven't applied any of the overclock settings yet. So this should cut down to both cards at the same time. Boop. Yep, 305. So both cards plus the board, 305 if we call it even 130 per card, it's 260, only 40 watts to run the board. A pretty big box for a video card, but this thing was 1160, so less than 1200 bucks on Costco, and it has a 5700 in it. Not a 5700 XT, but close enough. So tear it apart, and, and we're gonna rip that thing out and put it in the basement. And yeah, let's just see what it looks like. I guess probably looks crappy. I'm trying to cut the kid. Hey, dude. Yeah. Don't get in the toilet. Ooh. There's a lot of foam. I like to see foam. There's a bunch of stuff. Keyboards and whatnot, I'm sure. It's things that I don't need. Yeah, this is just a crappy HP thing, but the case is nicer than mine. The board and CPU are nicer than mine. It has more RAM than mine. Like everything in here except, well, the video card is nicer than mine too, but we don't care. So if I don't resell it sans card, I'll probably go ahead and uh, just use it as an upgrade. I'll put my 1060 in here, keep the case and everything, just throw my hard drives in it if I can find spots for mine instead of theirs. And then take these drives, put them in my old case and make it a garage computer. So I took this thing upstairs, plugged everything in, in place of my normal PC, made sure it booted up. That way, if I do decide to try to, well, I'm gonna try to sell it, um, and I won't feel, I won't have it be untested. So I booted the thing up. It's full of Hewlett Packard's bloatware garbage. So I went ahead and um, reinstalled Windows using their uh, their key 
So now it has Windows 10 Home on it, the same it shipped with, only it doesn't have any of the HP garbage on it. So if somebody does buy this off me and put their own video card in it, it'll be a nice little upgrade. Um, but yeah, we're going to take this guy out and put him up there with his friends. I'm hitting peak stupidity. So these cables that I ordered, they're supposed to be power supply cables, uh, are not compatible with this power supply, right? They've got some weird shit going on where like this top corner one's square instead of round, this one's round instead of square. I'm not going to risk it. We'll let that card sit for a day or two while stuff comes in because this setup so far, although messy, uh, one day maybe I'll clean it up. You know, we have a single cable that has an extension, so it powers the, the riser, then an the extension comes up, this one to a splitter because I had two things, ooh, that's born, two things there. Um, to power it. I'm not sure those are both necessary, but it didn't seem to run without it when I had it upstairs. Either way, same thing on this one. Normal power supply cable, and then this doesn't reach, so I use an extension to get it to the top. So, two of them. Well, another day, another mess. So, because this power supply, it's apparently really difficult to get those cables. Hopefully, the company emails me back with a better answer than other people I've seen online, or they just say no. Um, one guy in an Amazon review even said that he wanted more cables, so he sent it back and said that it was missing cables and just kept the ones that he wanted extras of, which, I mean, if you don't offer them for sale, what do you expect people to do? Me, um, I can afford stuff, so I bought this EVGA one because that's what these uh, extensions that I bought are compatible with, so the wires that I had thrown around won't completely go to waste. And we now have, they came with more as well. They came with four cables, uh, two split, and two are single wire. So with splitters and extensions that I had, I made this rat's nest, and we have all the cards and the board running on one supply. Uh, back to mining on them with overclock settings in place, and 448-ish watts. So I put an entry in the spreadsheet just a bit ago, so tomorrow we'll get a full day, see how much power it consumes, see how much more um, I earn, and then move on from there. So I think, yeah, tomorrow I'll update the spreadsheet, do a little bit of video to end this. I'll take, um, let's use my headset or something. Here's a sound test, me talking. Not sure how it's gonna sound. Need to change uh, mouse settings so my cursor can be seen. Uh, da, da, da. Make it bigger and pink, bright pink. Hell yeah, that'll do her. So I'll do a quick overview. This is how I set up my spreadsheet to kind of see what my ROI is going to be. Um, electric rate, let's be a little more detailed there, 0.185. Uh, power cost, why did you do that? There, good enough. So on this side, it's hard to use this giant mouse. Uh, date and time goes in here. Jesus, stop it. <laughs> and it populates here together. So when I add and subtract these cells it gives me just hours like however many hours i ran i have little notes here so everything in gray is not accurate data right because i didn't have the cards running all on the same rig i didn't have the 5700 installed yet uh, there's just a number of things that the only reason these lines exist is to test the math and make sure it's working so up here i have this pulls in the value of Bitcoin live while putting in a delay, however many. Here I can put in a price drop to estimate, to get my value that's using the math to not show what my projected monthly is. Um, and here, I just, what I do is I do my timestamp, I just take whatever value's in the wallet. So after a month, when I pull that money out to pay the additional electrical and go towards my return on investment, um, I'll have to, account for that somehow because the only these values are totals right so the value here is going to be total value in the account depending on price the value here is going to be our total power used according to the meter in the basement as well as this little bit of math accounts for the 1060 6 gigabyte card that's running in my actual desktop it doesn't run 24 7 but we're going to charge the electricity like it is um, same thing with the power per hour, or the uh, power cost, power per hour. Yeah, so the cost is there. 
here's how much the power costs per hour, and that takes this number into account, right? It takes our H9 minus H8. Does that make sense? Divided by C9. Divided by the time. Okay. Does that make sense? Hold on a second. Okay, yeah, so I am making sense. <laughs> so this one, I went the wrong way. So it takes our total, right, and it subtracts the previous total so that you only have the difference, and then your hours are the hours between entries. So we're dividing that by the hours to get an hourly rate for our electricity. That also accounts for the 1060. And then our value per hour is the same thing. It subtracts these two and just looks at the interval and then projects the the monthly amount. So if you are running at that peak, here's the amount you'll get. And the reason I'm doing it this way is to see kind of an exaggerated version, right? So that now that we're stable and we're not going to really touch the things for a while, um, I'll do a daily or every couple days and this should stay the same. And then if I go in and say, hey, you know, if two months from now Bitcoin drops $20,000 per that's what I'll make a month instead. Still happy with that. Because remember, this takes into account the electricity cost, which doesn't go up or down. It's the same all the time. So even if Bitcoin dropped to $7,000, I'd still pay for my electricity and make $30 a month. It's not ideal, but it shows that things can crash quite a bit before this becomes not profitable on modern cards. And that's why they're all out of stock now. So I kind of got lucky in that I was able to pick up you know, a 3060 for retail. This is all prices, including state tax, state sales tax. Um, my wife was a doll <laughs> and stood in line and bought a second card. She got the last one in stock. Uh, I didn't even realize there'd be a line. I didn't think that things were that hectic. And when we showed up, yeah, it was just wrapped around the building. And she's like, oh, if I don't get in now, people are just going to keep showing up. And then I bought a gaming PC from Costco. This is retail on the card like a couple of years ago when a non XT 5700 came out and this was the cost of the whole PC. My, this is the PC itself is better than the one I used the game on once in a while. So if I don't, if I'm not able to sell it on the secondary market to recoup that cost, I'll just use it on my own and I still won't count it towards the rig costs. Uh, this guy, I got a card for a good price on eBay and he canceled it. He said it didn't benchmark. Like it failed benchmark or stress test. I was like, bullshit. He probably sold it to one of his buddies or somebody else for more locally. Either way, didn't get it. Would have been nice to have another card, but this 5700 is really, it's performing really well. Um, so I'm happy with it. And then the rest of this stuff, you know, I just picked up on Amazon. Like here's, you know, 12 risers. So when I get more cards, I won't have to buy more. Um, also, those can go bad from what I've heard. Lots of splitters, power supplies. You know, I bought the second power supply, so I threw that in here. So a lot of this stuff, um, especially the risers and the power supply, will get used later. So this total won't go up. From here on out, it should only be like splitters and cables. So yeah, it'll it'll be fun to, to keep up with and uh, got me to not work on the on the diesel swap for a couple of weeks, but I'll get over that and I'll get back to work on the car pretty soon now that this is up and running.